everybody welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio for those that don't know my name is Nicole Reed and today we are here to make the autumn tiles quilt block so over in DD's quilting and crafting group we've actually got a yearly challenge happening right now and it is basically making a quilt block from A to Z so the challenge is to find a quilt block that starts with the letter A B C D and so forth and so on so I thought that I've got a few blocks on um, my channel for um, anybody that's looking for them but I thought I would make videos about the ones that I don't have so this one is an autumn tile and basically you can see the picture up here of what it looks like and so we're going to make that together today all right so the few things that you're going to need is you're just going to need two fabrics today so this is a contrasting block so we just have a background and then we have a featured fabric so I'm just using some scraps that I've had in my pile and most of the blocks that I'm going to make for this challenge will just be from my scrap pile so I'm just using um, this was off the bolt for a, a project bag that I made and it was a little bit left over so I've got that and I've also got some um, backing fabric from a quilt that I had quilted and used this on the backing so I've got that there um, I've also used this with other quilts as well all right so once you've got your general sewing supplies so you're going to need pen and rulers and rotary cutters pins and best press you know the general stuff that you need you're also going to need an iron and an ironing pad and of course a working sewing machine and matching thread okay so once you've got everything moved out of the way there's a bit of cutting that we need to do the first thing that you need to do from your background fabric we need to cut two six and a quarter um, squares we need to cut four two and a half uh, by four and a half rectangles we need to cut four two and a half by six and a half rectangles and we need to cut eight two and a half inch squares out of our pattern fabric we want to cut two six and a quarter inch squares and we want to cut five two and a half inch squares and that's all we need out of our dark fabric all right so once you've got all your cutting done you would have seen I've made some marks on our um, white fabric our background fabric so this is on the wrong side of the fabric and you're just going to take your friction pen and you're going to mark a diagonal line uh, across on the back of that fabric and then you're going to take your patterned fabric with the right side facing up and then put the right fi side facing down of your background fabric on top of one another and you're going to line up all of those raw edges okay as best as you can um, with this one we've got a little bit of trimming once we've sewn so that's not a problem if it's slightly out okay try to be as accurate as you can with your cutting it'll make life so much easier for you all right so once you've done that what you're going to do is you are just going to pop a pin to hold it in place okay but not over the lines because we're going to stitch on either side of the lines so we're making some half square triangles right now and basically what will happen is by doing it this way we will end up with eight half square triangles okay so just grab your pins and pop them in making as i said making sure that you're not going over the line so you don't have to worry about moving that and then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch on either side of this line okay so just a quarter inch on this side of the line and the same on this side and then the same on this side okay all right so i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and do that okay so we've sewn you can see here i've sewn on either side of the line okay just remove your pins now that's going to stay together and then okay so now what we're going to do now that we've sewn that we're going to make a measurement and basically we're going to grab our ruler and we're going to pop our ruler on where that cross junction is of our marked line okay and we want to line our ruler up on the three and one eighth mark okay and then we're going to cut okay and then if you've got a turning tu uh, turning mat that'd be great but you don't necessarily need it and again we're just going to you can see where this point's coming I'm going to place our ruler just there and you can see on this side here it's lining up at three and one eighths okay making sure everything's nice and straight and then I'm going to cut that again and then we ended up with two squares there 
and we're going to do the same for our other piece over here and cut all right so we've got our four squares and you can see we've still got our line mark there so what we're going to do is we're going to place our ruler on that line and we're going to cut on that line and that will give us two half square triangles So in total, we will end up with 16 half square triangles because we do it for both of our squares. Okay, so once you've done that one, repeat for your other one and you can see here that we've got, I've already done that off camera and I have eight half square triangles. Now we need to actually square these up and how I do that is I just open these up and I like to press my seams open for this sort of thing. Just gives me a, a flatter half square triangle to work with. And I find that I get a more accurate um, assembly of the block. So I'm just going to finger press them all open. You can press them with the iron if you prefer. Um, I just do it this way because it's quicker. Okay, so once you've pressed them all open, we need to square these up and we need to square them up to two and a half inches. Okay, so you can see here that I've got these all squared and all I do for that is I place my half square triangle down and I use this uh, ruler that I've had for many years. It's got a, a line that goes from one corner to the other and I line my seam up on that. Okay, and these are bigger than two and a half inches, so there will be some trimming. And basically all I do is I line up that line on the seam and I don't line it up on the two and a half down here because I like to just give myself a nice straight edge first. So basically I just place that on and then I will take a little bit off this side because as I said they are bigger. Just move that out of the way and then I'll just turn that around and you can see now that I have got a nice clean edge to line up my ruler on and again I place that um, diagonal line on the half square and then I find my two and a half inch mark and I bring it down and you can see that here it is lining up really nicely on the fabric and my diagonal line is also lining up as well on the seam and then I can trim that off at two and a half and I'm going to repeat that with the remainder of my half square triangles until they're all complete Okay, so now that we've got all those done, we do need to start assembling our block. So we're going to make some components of this block by joining some of these together. Okay, making sure that I've got this right. I want to wreck it on the last one. Trim that up a little bit. Just wasn't sitting right for me. All right, that's better. Now it's sitting much better. All right. Okay, so clear off your workspace. Okay, so once you've made your half square triangles, we do need to make some components to start assembling our block. So we need to make four of each of these. So, and one set of four are gonna be one way and one set of four are going to be the other way. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to take um, each of your components and you're going to sew these together and you're going to have four sets of these going this way so your try your dark triangle going to the right hand side and then with your other eight tri uh, half square triangles you're going to make four with your dark triangles going to the left so they're going to be mirror image of each other that's really simple to do all we're going to do is place them right sides together and we're going to pop a pin in the side that we're going to stitch okay making sure that our triangles are going the right way when we do them and that the next set are mirror image make sure that all your raw edges are lining up and we're going to do a little bit of chain piecing okay that makes it super quick and easy to do and we just feed them all through and then we'll come back and we will um, move on to the next step okay so they're all pinned together let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch those down Okay, so we have done that and now all we need to do is clip them apart. Makes it super quick to chain piece them through. Get rid of any long threads that you might have hanging around. Get them out of the way. OK, 
Okay, so now you need to make sure that you've got four components with your dark triangles going towards the right, and we do. And then we want four components with our dark triangle going to the left. Okay, so you can see here I've got them going mirror image. All right. And then all I'm going to do with these is, again, I'm just going to press those seams open. Okay, and once you've done that, you can just set them aside. So now we're moving on to our corners and we need to make four of those. So you're going to need for each component, you're going to need a background, a uh, a coloured fabric, a background fabric in the two and a half inch squares, and then you're going to need your two and a half by uh, four and a half inch rectangle. And all we're going to do for that is we are just going to join these together. So basically, you're going to place your two two and a half inch squares right sides together, and you're going to pop a pin in there, and then we're going to stitch across. Then once that's done, we'll press our seam open and then we'll attach it to our rectangle. So that is one component there. And I'm going to repeat the same until I've got four components. So just making sure our right sides are touching. And that all our raw edges are lining up. Okay, so let's head over to the sewing machine and chain piece them through. All right, so we've done that. And then we are going to join them to our rectangles. But before we do that, we are going to get rid of all our um, long threads. Okay, so you'll have one component that looks like this. Then you'll have another component that has the triangles going towards the right. And then you'll have a component with the triangles going towards the left. And then you're going to sew these together into a block that looks like this but before we do that we need to join some pieces together so our our piece that um, has our triangles going to the right we need to place our um, cornerstone onto that so that is our little two and a half inch white square and then our other component with our um, pieces going to the left we want to have that at the top there and then we're going to have this piece here with the square down in the bottom right hand corner. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, and yes, the camera angle has changed a little bit and everything is sewn because I didn't realise that my camera had shut off. So I unpicked one and we go back to where we begin. All right, so um, yeah, so that's why it's changed a little bit and all these are done. So basically what we're doing is we're creating four of these blocks here. So that's what it's going to look like. So that's what we have to get it to. So to do that, we are going to take our two and a half inch square and add it to our triangles. And we're just going to stitch that across and then we're going to do exactly the same with this piece here right sides together making sure our raw edges are all lining up and then what we will do is we will pop a pin in there on the side we're going to sew we'll head over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch those through and then i'll come back and show you what to do next okay so we've got our pieces sewn together we are just going to take off our snip our threads off then we're going to open up our seams like we have throughout the rest of the block and give that a bit of a press and then we will join these components together but before we do we want to make sure that our pieces are measuring at the correct size so this piece here should measure four and a half by six and a half and I'm just going to measure that up and that is at six and a half, but I can trim a little bit off just to get it to the four and a half. All right, so that's that bit. And this bit is two and a half by six and a half. And then what we're going to do to create our block is we're just going to line these up, making sure that our seams all match up. And that our triangles are going in the right direction okay so once that is all in and you're ready to go you're going to head over to the sewing machine using a quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to stitch across where we've just pinned that is all sewn together again after that mishap with the camera <laughs> but we're just going to press that open and we're going to get into the final assembly so we'll be up to setting our rows in place in just a moment Okay, that is all set and ready to go. All right, so pop your ironing pad out of the way. 
and we're going to grab our blocks that we've made and our remaining fabric so we've got our uh, six and a half strips by two and a half and our center block and I'm just going to lay all this out and hopefully this will all fit on the camera so I'll just move some things out of the way now our block is coming together quite quickly now all right so you just want to make sure that your little squares your colored squares are going into the center you've got your center block and you've got all your pieces so we've got row one row two and row three so we're going to construct our rows and then we'll add them all together so let me just bring that out just a touch for you so you can see it a little bit better okay and that is what our layout is going to look like all right so as i said i'm just going to bring all our pieces together so i'm just going to take the right sides touching and we don't have any seams at this point to worry about here so we can just pop some flat pins in and i'm going to do a little bit of chain piecing with this part as well so i'll pop that back there and then i'll grab this piece and put them right sides together and pop a pin in and then i'll do the same as this side making sure that the right sides are touching and all our raw edges are lining up pop our pin in and then we're just going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to chain piece that through okay um, using a quarter inch seam allowance but I'm going to take these pieces with me as well and I'm going to attach them all so when I come back all my rows will be ready to go all right so we've got all our bits sewn together now we're up to final assembly so this is our top row our middle and our bottom row all right so what we're going to do is we're going to just attach our middle to the top one and then we'll uh, our bottom row if I have it up the right way that was almost a mistake wasn't it all right, let me just come out a touch more all right so we're going to attach this middle row to row one and then we'll attach row three to that one okay so what you're going to line up is your center seams here they're the only seams that we have to line up all right so just go right sides together and pin them into place I'll try that again Okay. and we're going to use our fork pins again because we know how well these work for keeping our seams in place and then we'll worry about doing all of the raw edges so when I'm doing a block of this size and this is a 14 it'll be a 14 inch block once it's sewn into a quilt basically I just worry about all the seam um, seams lining up first and then I'll worry about the ends and making sure all the raw edges line up and all that sort of stuff and then I'll just pop some flat pins along that where I'm going to sew and that'll just make it super easy to um, keep everything under control and not getting too rowdy and not lining up properly all right now remember to use your quarter inch seam allowance correctly and try not to wobble too much so we don't lose any corners or anything like that any points okay and as i said when we sew this into a quilt it will be 14 inches all right so i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and i'm going to stitch that down using a quarter inch seam allowance and as always when i get to this stage of my block and i know it's going to be sitting around for a while i will do a back stitch at the beginning and there at the end it's not necessary but it just saves the seams coming apart okay so we've got that added on and now we are going to place our next one on making sure that we are lining up all of our seams all right again we're going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch that down okay, our block is all together now what we're going to do is just get rid of any threads that may be hanging around and we're going to give it a really good press 
All right, so our block is all pressed and it's all finished and we can set that aside ready to use for when we're ready to assemble a quilt. This is a 14 inch block and as I said at the beginning of the video, I am doing a whole heap of different blocks and I'm using my A to Z challenge um, over in DD's Quilting and Crafting Group, which the link is down below if you want to come over and join. It's not too late. Uh, this is A. Um, autumn tints it's called and um, yeah so I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out I'm just going to be using my um, my scraps for everything and um, hopefully I can make a dent in my scraps but I'm going to keep my background fairly uniformed all right so that is the autumn tints block if you like this video today give it a thumbs up down below if you're new here or you've yet to subscribe hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and don't forget, leave me a comment down below and tell me where you're watching from. And if you've made it this far, leave me the emoji of the sewing needle or the sewing spool, this um, thread spool in your emojis. And that way I know you've made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great week, everybody, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.